So what do we got here? I think there's something in here you're really gonna like to see. Okay. 1963, American-made Fender Stratocaster. Oh, to me, this is the guitar. But there's something very, very special about this specific guitar. All right. This guitar was actually played by Jimi Hendrix. That's a big wow factor right there. Jimi Hendrix, man, he's one of the greatest rock and roll legends of all time. But what I'm bringing to the table today is not only a piece of rock and roll history, but it's very well preserved. Jimi Hendrix, he was an icon. This guy did things with a guitar that no one did before. He played a Strat. Yeah. Left-handed guitars are far and few between. Right, His right. first guitars were used. He couldn't find a left one. Right. So he started playing with a right-handed guitar with the strings upside down. Even when he had money, he continued playing guitars that were right-handed guitars yeah. strung upside down. Do you mind if I pick it up? No, absolutely. By all means. All right. This is the Holy Grail. He actually held this guitar that you now have in your hands and made wonderful music with it. Is there any pictures of him playing it on stage or anything? Or? No, because he, it was exclusively played in the studio. This was his really favorite sort of recording acts. I'm going to set this down. <laughs> <laughs> and where did you get this? It was actually owned by a guy named Skip Jarrett. There was a, a studio called Juggy Sound Studio that Jimmy loved to cut in okay. up in New York. Skip was the chief engineer at Juggy Sound Studio. And after they wrapped up all the production on Band of Gypsies and all that, they gave this guitar to Skip. When he passed away, one of my business associates and I acquired the guitar. OK. This guitar was on Band of Gypsies? Yeah, he played this guitar on several records. He actually played it on Nervous Breakdown as well. OK. Here's just something that came out this year in this magazine about this specific guitar. The guy that wrote this article, you know, did a lot of extreme diligence. Plus, I have, you know, a letter signed by Jimmy's brother. I have seen items where people had letters from the family. Right, right, okay. okay and it okay. turned out not to be what they said it was. Right. Okay, that's the one big thing that scares me. How much do you want for the guitar? I think this guitar, you know, from everyone I've talked to, I'd be willing to take, say, 750000 for it. I have a friend who, if this thing is real, he will know. And if not, he'll call bull Bring it. You know okay, what yeah. I'm saying? <sighs> All right, I'll be right back. Give me awesome. a few minutes. Okay, thanks, man. I have nothing to hide. Let's turn the lights on real bright. This is an authentic Jimmy Hendrix guitar. I'm happy to challenge anybody that he wants to bring to the table to look at it, because he'll authenticate the guitar. This is stupid cool. I mean, <laughs> Jimmy's one of Jimmy's guitars. <laughs> Hendrix turned the guitar into an extension of his body. Every way he moved was altering the sound of the guitar. When you see him dip down real low, he's bending the guitar. Physically out of it. bending right. the guitar. Right, right. There's very few guys that can make their own statement with the guitar anymore. But guys come along like Jimi Hendrix and just take it to a completely new place. I want to make sure this is 100% before we start talking a lot of money. Yeah. You mind if I take a look at it? No, man. By all means, that's why you're awesome. here. There's a couple of things you'd want to look at. The tremolo bar. These are usually bent and angled up. He played the guitar upside down. He flattened a lot of these out and made them straight. So they probably weren't ramming into his arm and stuff like that. Another thing is what they call ring wear. If you're playing the guitar like this, my wedding ring hits the guitar, removes a lot of the paint, finish from there. If you look at this guitar, the top side of the neck has a lot of that wear. That's from the guitar being this way. Now Jimmy would have played it left-handed. The article that you guys have sitting over there, they asked a bunch of vintage dealers to take a look at this guitar with photos and stuff like that. The serial number here, L14985. This guitar has actually been documented. No doubt, this is definitely one of Jimmy's guitars. That's really, really cool. In my head, I think I know what it's worth, but what do you think? No guitar is worth anything unless everything's working on it, in my book. <laughs> Plug it in, let it rip, Let's just turn this. it up loud. Cannot believe this. <laughs> That's a good guitar, man. So what do you think it's worth? Anywhere from 750 to Good auction, million. 
All right, thanks, man. All right, man. Thank you. Justin, thanks, thanks again man. for letting yeah, me play. You're welcome, man. Thanks a lot. That felt crazy to hold one of Jimi Hendrix's guitars, man. You could see why he liked it, because it was a really good, balanced, nice-feeling guitar. At a personal level, I absolutely love it. But you have to find the right auction. It has to be advertised in the least amount of time would be a year, most likely. Right. Let me give you 450000 450 Man. I, I, my, my thing is, I take all the risk, you walk away with cash. For a guitar that could fetch maybe a million dollars on any day, your guy, own guy just told you that. Okay, but what uh, we come on, 450 grand? Yeah, I'm thinking 750, man. A lot of commissions and a lot of people got to get paid to sell this thing. Okay, <laughs> right. it's just right. the, it's the way the world works. Right. Okay. I'll give you half a million. This guitar's worth more than that. It it, it's, it just is. If you want the money now, I can go 550. Knowing that it could potentially fetch a million dollars at an auction, I can't leave that much money on the table. Uh, 750, really, man. That's a that's a bottom dollar I can take for the guitar. Hey, well, have a nice day. Tell me if it goes to auction, I might bid on it. OK. <sighs> Thanks, man. Well. Six. I can't do it, man. But I'll call you if I change my mind. Call me. OK. All right, man. He's fired one last bullet across the boat there with, with the $600,000 offer, you know? Honestly, I was starting to kind of get a little bit more tempted by that. But if you want to come to a fair point in selling something of great value, don't be desperate about it. And that I am not. I just got a call from my art expert friend. He said something amazing just walked into his shop. It's not the kind of thing he buys, but he promised me I would love it. So I'm going to Brett's gallery to check it out. Thanks for coming down. This is the gentleman I wanted you to meet, Ron Raffelli. How's it going? How do you do? So what do we got here? Ron came in with these vintage Jimi Hendrix photographs, and we're not really dealing much with photography. But I know you're a Hendrix fan, so I had to have you come down here and uh, see some of his pieces, which I think are, are fantastic. I've just never seen pictures of Jimi Hendrix like this, never. How in the world did you get photos like this? I was Jimi's photographer. Seriously? That's why I'm all gray. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking to start marking my archive, and this film that I had of Jimmy Hendrix I had never been seen. I kept them for myself for too long. It's time that people see Jimmy Hendrix for who he really was. How did you get a gig being Jimi Hendrix's photographer? I went on an audition, and he chose me as his photographer, basically to document the, his American tour. I become basically a member of the band. These have been in my archive for the last 40 years. OK. One of the things I find most amazing about Jimi Hendrix is he was only on the American rock scene for two years. And that two years changed rock and roll for the next 40 years. Eric Clapton told me when he first heard Jimi Hendrix play, that he thought he was going to put them all out of business. <laughs> that he was not going to, he would be selling shoes in a month. Jimi Hendrix did things on a guitar that a lot of people never thought were possible. And since he died so young, his memorabilia is huge. So a bunch of never before seen photos would drive some collectors nuts. So what do you think about these? I think they're great. You were really part of his inner sanctum. And I, I think that that really shows through in the photographs. They don't have the whole persona. Jimmy's not a, a rock god. He's kind of unveiled. All right, so these are all from the original negatives and the? Yeah, I mean, they, they look to be from the original negative to me. And I don't recognize any of these images of, of this having ever been published. I buy a lot of stuff. But what surprises a lot of people, I buy fine art, too. It can be tough in a recession. But with the right pictures at the right price, I can make a buck or two. So why are you releasing them now? I have uh, been reborn, and I've taken all my old material, and I wanted to show Jimmy the way he should be shown and, and the quality that he deserves to be presented in. Nobody had the access that I had. I've captured Jimmy, and he's in these pictures. You haven't even seen the most amazing shots yet. That's incredible. That was a real spider. I almost walked into it coming back from another shoot. I jumped back because I'm scared to death of spiders. And Jimmy said, I'm not afraid. I'll take a picture with it. I said, OK, put your face up there. And he put his face up there. I focused on the spider, and there it is. 
Yeah, that's pretty amazing. What I would really like to do is be able to put a lot of these in my store. I mean, I think they would sell like hotcakes. So if you don't mind, I'd really like to make a pile of ones I'd like to buy right now. Well, by all means. Okay. I'm going to pick out a stack of what I think are the best images and make them an offer. Art is like anything else. It's always cheaper when you buy in bulk. So, Brett, this is sort of where I need your help. <laughs> what do you think photos like this would go for? Do you mind if I ask you a few questions, Ron? Certainly. OK. Now, you haven't marketed any of these shots ever. That's right. OK. Are they a limited edition, or are they an open edition, or do you know? It's an open yet? edition of signed okay. prints. Signed prints, and they're archival quality. You supervise everything. I do it myself. You do everything. OK, very good. Do you have, like, a certificate of authenticity that you're doing that documents the, the process? Very good, right there. OK. But I could see a piece like this, you know, nicely framed, maybe even a little placard kind of documenting the concert, that type of thing, selling twelve to $1,500. OK. But I think they'll continue to go up over time. And these ones right here? The smaller ones, less so, maybe in the, you know, the, the $700, $800 range, I would say. But still, very collectible. Vintage photography is very big right now, especially when you're talking about photographs of icons like Jimi Hendrix. I got 28 photos here. Normally, what galleries do is they take things on consignment, and they generally get a really large discount. Um, I'm not really asking for that. It's just not the way I like to do business. Make me an offer. I'll tell you what. I'll give you, for this pile right here, I'll give you $10,000. I've had except ten thousand dollars for these. Are worth at least twenty. I mean, by the time he frames them, I put them on the wall. I mean, they take up real estate in my store. I'm gonna have to take other things down. What about twelve? Nobody's seen them. They're unpublished. Eighteen. This is some incredible stuff, but I'm taking all the risk here because you haven't been published before. Hey, I, I'm really seeing like 14,000. It's my heart and soul. Come on. We're going to make a fortune. Fifteen. You got a deal. All right. Thanks a lot, Brad. I really appreciate You're it. You're welcome. Brad. Look forward to seeing these in the shop. I'm really excited we were able to make a deal. I think I can make a serious profit once people realize what I have. Hey, how can I help you? Hey, gentlemen. I have this, uh, what I think is extremely rare, Jimi Hendrix poster from a concert he did in Berlin, Germany, second to the last show he ever did. Were you there? I wish. Isn't Jimi Hendrix technically considered a one-hit wonder? No, 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 no. <laughs> he was big. I but mean, he only had one song ever make the top 10 of the charts. And even today, great artists don't go number one. And you have pop stars like Justin Bieber or who? <laughs> I decided to come to the pawn shop today to sell my Jimi Hendrix poster. I want 12000 for the poster. Jimi just piques my interest because he's just totally unique. Never got to see him in concert. That's my big tragedy. <laughs> a really cool poster. You know, what can I say? It's Jimi Hendrix. It was a show he did. It was called the Deutschland Hall. The Berlin Super Concert 70. Where'd you get the poster at? Uh, I got it from a collector in Europe. Uh, well, I know Jimi Hendrix was big in England. He was big in Europe. When he came back to the States, he was a rock star. Just a unique guitar player, left-handed. Hendrix never played a left-hand guitar. He learned on a right-handed guitar with the strings turned upside yeah. down. So whenever you see a picture of him, instead of the knobs being on the bottom, they're right. on top. Jimi Hendrix was a guitar legend. His aggressive and innovative style of guitar playing not only influenced rock stars of the day, and also paved the way for all the heavy metal bands of the next generation. Any Jimi Hendrix concert poster is worth money. There's some of them worth like 15, 20 grand. I mean, it, it's in perfect condition, which is a big, big concern because no one took care of these things. No one ever thought they were going to be worth money. Jimmy is one of those artists that fans feel almost a spiritual connection to. So if this poster is authentic, I'm definitely interested in it because it could be worth a lot of money to collectors. So how much were you looking to get out of it? I uh, would like to get 12000 for it. <sighs> Um, I mean, it doesn't sound like a out-of-this-world number, but before I start making big money offers around, I want to make sure it's the real thing. So I want to call my buddy down here to take a look at it. Okay? Okay. 
Thank you. I don't mind taking a guess on lower ticket items, but whenever there's potentially thousands of dollars on the table and I'm not sure, I'm going to call for backup. Rick, how are you? Doing great, man. Is that a new hat? No, same hat. Oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> when you run a general history museum, you have artifacts from all eras. So to look at a, a 1970s rock poster is not unusual. I've had them in museum collections. So Mark, we got a Jimi Hendrix poster, and obviously you came to mind. <laughs> you may actually find this surprising, but I am a Hendrix fan. You couldn't think of somebody that had a greater impact on how people play the electric guitar. OK. The 60s was a time of experimentation, and Hendrix took what you could do with electric music to levels that we had never seen before. So what are your concerns on this? OK, um, it's one of those weird things. How do you tell if a concert poster is real? I need to take a closer look at it, so I'm going to have to roll it out. Go ahead. OK. Huh. The paper is a typical poster paper of that time period. You know, you've got Gebrauchs Grafik, would be the printer in Hamburg. That's right. That's the correct designer for the poster. Looking at the way this is printed, looking at the material, this is right. But the registration isn't quite right on it. There's a little bit of white showing around the red on this side. That's actually a good sign because they weren't meant to last. When they were printing it, they weren't being that careful. I think this is right. Thanks for coming in, Mark. You're the man. <laughs> <laughs> so how much you want for it? I was asking 12,000. There's very few people in the world willing to spend this kind of money for a concert poster to put on the wall. It's a recession, man. How about if I cut you a deal and let it go for eight? <sighs> I don't even think I can get that out of it on the best of days. I'll give you three grand for it. Whoa, that's kind of low. There's only a few guys I know that might be interested in it. And if they don't buy it, I'm going to have it for a long time. How about six? This poster is rare. Uh, I'll, I'll just cut to the chase. I'll give you four grand. I won't give you a penny more. Four it is. OK, it's a deal. Write them up, son. Four grand might sound like a lot for an unsigned poster, but this thing is incredibly rare. And Hendrix collectors will pay good money for it. If I can find the right buyer, I will definitely make a profit on this. What's going on, man? Not too much. I got this picture as a gift, and it's not really my style. How can Jimmy Hendrix not be your style? Mm. It's just not my style. I came down to the pawn shop today to try to sell my Jimi Hendrix picture. I was told that the uh, photographer is a pretty rare photographer. I would like to get 3500 out of it. I won't walk out of the store for less than 2000 So it must have liked you a lot, man. This is a limited print from Jared Mankiewicz. And there's only 25 of these in the world. I did not know that. Yeah, as far as rock and roll photography goes, this is the guy. Mankiewicz was one of the biggest rock photographers of the 1960s. After he shot his first Rolling Stones album cover in 1965, his career just blew up. But for my money, you can't beat his Hendrix photos. I mean, they're just amazing. My dad would go ape over this. I mean, he was probably one of the best guitar players ever to live. I mean, Yeah, I agree. You know, Jimmy may not be the best technical guitar player, but he's by far the best rock and roll guitar player. Before Jimmy, he just played the guitar, and there was no sound effects, you know? He invented that. This would look good on my wall. Nah, it's going on my dad's wall. I haven't got him anything for Father's Day yet, and he'll like this. It's framed and ready to go. I don't have to do anything to it. It's amazing what walks in the door sometimes. I mean, you just don't see these things up for sale very often. But I shouldn't have let the guy know I liked it, because now he's going to try to squeeze more out of me. Give me an idea of what you want for it. 35. 35 bucks ain't too bad. No, no. <laughs> I'll give you 1500 for it, man. I mean, these things go in the gallery for 2500 Well, sounds like you want it. What do you think, 2250 I'll give you 18 22 You got me in a good position, man. But I'm not stupid. I'll give you two grand. There's no way I'm paying you anymore.
All right, two grand's a deal. It's yours. Appreciate it, my man. Thank you. Thank you. I settled on my $2,000, and I think that's a great deal. Rock and roll. Hey, how can I help you? So I have some poetry here written by Jimi Hendrix. Been carrying it, never folded it since I've had it and cherished it. You're saying Jimmy did this? Yes, sir. I decided to come to the pawn shop today to sell some rare poetry of Jimi Hendrix. It's just such a rare piece. I'd rather be in a museum. I believe the poem is worth anywhere from ten to $100,000. I've only asked 15000 for this today. So how'd you get this? I started working with a relative of Jimmy, Ricky Hendrix, here. I spent a lot of money promoting these guys, and I became part of the family with them. And so they gave me this poetry. You really have to say more than Jimi Hendrix, you just don't know. I mean, right. I mean, people remember him for playing the Star Spangled Banner at Woodstock with his teeth. But the other thing about him was, he was a true artist. Right. He did things with the guitar that had never been done before. He made a guitar sound different than anything before. And when he died, it was a crying shame. Most people consider Jimi Hendrix the greatest rock guitar player of all time. Just about anything he owned, signed, or touched can be worth money. But a Hendrix lost poem, this thing could be worth a fortune. So what does this say? But then I grace thee with wings, O lovely and true, birds of heavenly, snow and crystals. Fly, my love, as you have before. Pleasures and only steps and this just want more. Jimi Hendrix, 1969. If this thing is genuine, there's no question I want it. But I have to be cautious. There is a ton of fakes out there. My biggest concern is this is in awfully good shape. I mean, generally, if he wrote something like this, someone would have folded it up, put it in their pocket. Do you have any paperwork or anything else saying that Jimmy did this? There's a book coming out about the lost poetry of Jimi Hendrix. The historian with the book emailed me about the lost writings. Do you have anything specific to this saying that it's real? No paperwork from being authenticated. I'll tell you what, I'll have someone check it out, but I'm not going to even right. start talking price, talking anything. Right until I have an idea that this is actually the real deal. Do you mind coming back when I got someone here that can look at it? Sounds good. All right, sounds great, man. Nice to meet you, buddy. you guys. I'm looking forward to the next part to look at the poetry that I have because I know the poem is no fake and the history of Jimi Hendrix lives on. I'm Drew with Authentic Autographs Unlimited. I'm a forensic document examiner. Rick contacts me when he has special projects, anything to do with question documents. I'm the man who wants to call. This is what we got. It's supposed to be some poetry by Jimi Hendrix. Well, Rick, if it's as authentic, it's gonna be very expensive. There's no doubt about it. Let's see what it says here. Jimi Hendrix's signature is one of the most valuable rock and roll signatures there is. He died at a very young age, at 27 years old, and he was actually only really famous for four years. So there really is not a lot of them out there. Well, this definitely sounds like the type of lyrics that he would write. You know, it's very esoteric, and this is the kind of thing you would want to look for. But we always gotta take a look at all the little details. Okay, well, clearly we got a situation where we're dealing with a, uh, a felt tip pen. Almost all the poems or lyrics I've seen of him has been done with a ballpoint pen. Another thing we have to look at is the letter structures. The capital I has a very uh, squiggly line for the top bar. That's not something I've seen before. It's usually block type lettering. And the S are just slightly different than what I'm used to seeing. How it hooks down and it hooks back up. Mm -hmm. That's not quite what I've seen before. Let's take a look at the uh, signature itself. The handwriting is about the same size as the signature. In every case, it's three or four times larger. Much more flamboyant. The last name seems to be, you know, printed type style. He would always write in cursive. Seen a lot of different problems with it, and I can guarantee you that this is 100% not authentic. I mean, to hear something like that after seeing this and comparing it with other writings, I have doubt your opinion. Well, unfortunately, uh, I can only go by the evidence that's on the paper. Right. I can't go by certain stories or precedents. And what I can tell you right now is I'm 100% certain this is not authentic. I'm very sorry to tell you that. Thanks a lot, Drew. No problem. Thank you, Rick, for calling me in. Corey, good to see you again, brother. Appreciate it. All right, talk to you guys soon. I can understand the owner of the document being disappointed. Obviously, it's worth a lot of money if it was authentic. Uh, clearly, it is not. Unfortunately, I can only go by the evidence on the paper, and it's just not there. Well, I just happen to uh, disagree. I know what it's meant to me all these years, and um, the... I'm sorry, there's just nothing I can do with it. Okay. 
Well, thanks for bringing it in, man. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Thank you, sir. Well, we couldn't make a deal today with the guys. It doesn't bother me about whether I uh, sell it or not. I've already had family look at it. I've already had something more than what this expert has look at it. I don't trust his opinion when I've lived it.